There are numerous examples, and no volumes can be large enough to contain them all even if they filled the whole planet. Each atom in the universe is actually a proof on the basis of providence, whether we realize this today or will do so tomorrow. A. Insulin, the hormone that allows our bodies to use glucose, is secreted by the pancreas in the exact same amount of sugar we consume. B. The power of our hearts in pumping blood is exactly equal to the energy needed by the muscles when exerting any effort. C. The one-way valve of our stomach prevents the influx of digested food that would otherwise harm us. D. The sphincter muscles located at the gates of our orifices, without which our clothes would have been soiled the whole time. E. The skull bones that are left unfused at birth, so the baby can easily cover the journey through the birth canal without breaking its head. Had these bones been fused, the baby would have never been able to cover this journey, except if its skull got broken. These bones stay unfused till the brain is fully developed. F. All the axes of your nerves that convey the electrical signals are covered with a dielectric layer, as we do with electrical wires, so that the electric signals do not get lost or disturb us. G. The electron revolves around the nucleus at a speed of 1,000 kilometers per second, or otherwise, it would collapse inside the nucleus by the force of attraction of the positive nucleus, and the universe would have collapsed before it even began. So, this is the ideal speed for forming the atom. H. When two atoms of hydrogen combine, 0.7% of the hydrogen mass turns into energy. If this mass was 0.6% instead of 0.7%, the proton would have not combined with the neutrons, and the universe would have remained in the form of hydrogen, and none of the other elements would have been formed. If the mass converted to energy was 0.8% instead of 0.7%, the fusion would have been too fast, which would have led to the disappearance of hydrogen immediately from the universe, making life impossible. That's why this figure had to be between 0.6% and 0.8%. I. The electron mass constitutes 0.2% of the neutron mass, and this mass is ideal for forming the atom. J. After germination, the buds tend to go up directly to the light source, whereas the roots tend to go down because the buds are highly sensitive to light. All the information they need to function is encoded within the seed, and there are hormones that control the upper and lateral growth of the plant, as well as the growth toward the roots, all of which is encoded within the seed. You eat the delicious fruit and throw the dry and tasteless pit away. This way, you are compelled by a controller who governs the whole universe, allowing that fruit to pass its genes all over the earth giving you the savory taste while hiding the genes in the core of a smooth, dry pit that is not attractive to you. Once the seeds stick to the ground, it starts quietly transforming into branches and roots, and this is how the mother succeeds in passing her genes on to its children. All of this takes place in a plant that has no cognition. So, who adjusted the information for those deaf-mute fruits? And who adjusted the amount of sugar so it would appeal to your palate? Who made the seed unappealing so you could dispense with it and throw it away? Who loaded the seed with sufficient genetic information to create a new plant with all its details and functions? K. Lately, the scientists have been discussing the total mass of the universe and how it is essential for our existence on Earth. Inertia. This blessing which is given to our bodies in the form of resistance to any change in movement originates from the mass of the universe. Had the inertia been any less than what it is, any soft breeze of wind would have been able to move the rocks which would not have been able to resist the least amount of effort exerted on them. In a universe like ours, we would have been bombarded by all sorts of flying bodies. If the inertia was more than what it is, we would have found a great difficulty in moving our fingers, if we even managed to move them, and controlling them would have been an improbability. 
This means we would have been unable to move or do any tangible effort of any kind. The first man created would have not left his spot and the embryos would have not left the wombs. That is, if they even managed to take form in the wombs. That's why it is particularly interesting that the inertia of any matter had to be identically what it is right now. The thing that baffled the physicists here, as we see in the book, Unity of the Universe by Dennis William Skiyama, is that of this inertia, the whole of the Milky Way galaxy only contributes one ten millionth, the Sun contributes one hundred millionth, and the Earth itself contributes one thousand millionth. This leads us to realize that this ideal inertia we live on and which allows us to partake on all our activities is the overall value of the whole universe. Consequently, we can particularly say that our existence depends precisely on the mass of the whole universe and its very existence. Allah says what means, we did not create heaven and earth and all that is between them in vain. That is the opinion of those who deny the truth. Woe betide those who deny the truth when they are cast into the fire. Chapter 38, verse 27. The more we ponder and look, the more we realize the marvels, the wisdom, and the intricacies of this creation.